Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time and back up on the farm in Ellett County today. And this is the second video I've worked on today. So if you haven't already seen the first one with the Bear Creek Ballistics uh, 44 mag uh, ballistic tip bullet, uh, go check that one out. But uh, this one here will be the, uh, the Lehigh Defense 85 grain extreme cavitator. Now this is a 30 cal bullet. I've got this loaded in 300 blackout and I'll be running this out of the CVA Scout takedown with the 16 inch Here's barrel. Look at what we've got. So everybody that sees this bullet swears that you could use this to uh, <laughs> to run screws. And it is right about the size of a number two square uh, square tip. I think they call that a Robertson tip. And uh, here's our bullet. Here's a quick look at the uh, CBA Scout takedown. Now, like I said, this is 16 inch. It does have a threaded barrel on it. I have run this with suppressor and uh, it does pretty well with the right load. I've got a Vortex Venom 3, uh, 3 MOA red dot on this thing. Uh, this thing takes down to an overall length of basically 16 inches. Uh, when this is broken down, the, the section with the barrel is shorter than the section with the, the receiver and the trigger group in it. So makes a really nice prepping gun, backpack gun. And uh, here's one of the loads I typically run in this. It's a 110 grain, 110 grain Varmageddon and a uh, plastic tip. And those are running about 2,400, I think. Uh, I'll try to get this on the Garmin Cero again. Uh, I've not had good luck today shooting it up close. Uh, I may have found a fatal flaw in the Garmin. But I do know for sure that these are going to be over 1,700 foot per second. So there won't be any doubt in, uh, in my velocity range on these. So, All right, let's get turned around and going. All right, guys, just a quick note before I get started here. This is the block that I ran the, uh, the two rounds of the Bear Creek Ballistics HV into. You can see the wound channels back here pretty much even on both of these. And this one's been down on the ground twice and it's gotten kind of dirty. Uh, both of those bullets stopped here. So what I'm wanting to see... I'm wanting to see that, that temporary wound cavity open up through this first block. Uh, I'm looking for that more than anything. I would not be surprised if we get complete penetration through both of these blocks uh, that we do not catch this 85 grain bullet. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, this is my first go with these gel blocks. First day, second video. So, uh, yeah, I've got some tricks here I'm going to learn as far as getting the hair dryer and getting some of these... Uh, these lines out of it to make it a little bit more clear, but uh, following videos should be a lot better. I'll, I'll get better at this as we go. <clears throat> All right, guys, so this does bring back a few memories. The last time I shot this rifle uh, into ballistic gel uh, was when I was doing a collaboration video with Derek over at the Gun Dungeon, and uh, that was the day that Gel Block Jim met his uh, his fate so uh, this thing was notoriously shooting low at the time but i am a little farther away so let's let's see what it does here oh, i got a velocity 2322, according to the Garmin. So let's go see what it did. Still curious to see if I caught this one or not. That's right, guys. We do have a catch. So, uh, if you can see it in there or not, we're sitting right out there about 22 and three quarters inch to the nose of the bullet. And uh, here's the swoon channel. Got a pretty big plume right there, about six inches in. And then the mark right here is where I reached into the pliers and pulled out the 44 mag. Seems like it went through one of those uh, previous holes from that. 
And uh, here we are though. I'm really surprised to get this catch on this. So this is an all copper bullet. I'm trying to find a clear spot in the gel and not get a shadow at the same time. All right, so there it is. It looks absolutely intact other than the rifling on it. So, uh, all right, let's go set up and do another one. Okay, Lehigh Defense, 85 grain, all copper, shot number two. Smoking. All right, 23.16 for the velocity that time. And almost the same wound track. Um, looks like we got a little bit more exp penetration on this one. And I'm going to guess that's because it hit the same wound track for part of that distance. All right, shot number three. We'll see if I can uh, aim and get over here to the side a little bit more and get a different wound track on it. All right, so shot number three. Three fifty six on the velocity again. All right, so I did get a new wound channel this time. As you can see, it tracked right down through here. And this bullet's backwards. It did get into the, the 44 mag wound channel from before. Let me get the tape and we'll see what okay. we got. Okay, so uh, looks like 20, 25 and a half inches of penetration on that one. And uh, again, I think I hit the wound track from the 44 mag, so that probably uh, gave it a little bit more penetration. All right, I'll get these dug out of here and we'll have some picks. All right, guys, like I noted in the previous video, uh, back in the shop here, and uh, I've, I've taken a hair dryer to these, these molds and uh, I've actually clarified and taken out some of the opaqueness uh, on, on these things to where it's much more visible now than what it was outside on the range earlier. And uh, we've already taken a look in the previous video with the 44 mag, those uh, Bear Creek ballistics. Uh, 225 grain HVs and 44 Magnum, and uh, some really nice performance there. Uh, if you haven't already, go back and check out that video. But uh, So upon the entry, these bullets travel pretty straight for the first five to six inches, and uh, and then there's some action happening here. Looks like they uh, probably started uh, rotating, tumbling in over in, and carried right on down through here. Got some really nice wound channel here between uh, seven and 14 inches and then they seem to straighten out and uh, total penetration was down here around 23 or 26 inches. So two of these actually were still pointed nose forward. One of them was actually nose backwards and that actually is the one that had the most penetration on it. So, uh, you know, lots of good penetration on this and uh, just uh, an extremely wicked little bullet. And like I said, I, I'm pretty sure I can push these quite a bit faster and that may be something we try out later. Being an all copper bullet, uh, weight retention on these, there's nothing missing. So this is 100% weight retention. Uh, the only thing 
the only evidence on on these bullets that they've even been fired is the rifling and uh, you know I dare say these are probably going to get loaded again uh, I've done that several times with with copper bullets that uh, I'll, I'll run them back through a 30 cal sizing die 0 0.3 308 and uh, make sure they are round and then I'll put them right back in the case and shoot them again so you know gotta gotta do our part to, to be green here so uh sorry guys so uh couple of closing notes here. Uh, I actually had filmed all this earlier, including my closing uh, and everything you've seen previous to this. And, uh, and I just had finished editing this video. And uh, what you have seen already is what I just, just realized as I was slowing down these clips uh, and, 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 and pulling these frames per second down, uh, the absolute massive cavitation caused by this bullet. Now, this is a Lehigh Defense Extreme Cavitator bullet. This bullet was designed for that big, massive plume. And I'm, I'm saying that was probably a six inch, this is a six inch gel block and it was expanded out. So that was a six plus inch wound, hydrostatic wound cavity uh, going through here. And, uh, and I, I took some liberties of actually slowing every single one of them down uh, just to show that. And uh, so this is no joke. I mean, I, I, I knew that up front. I knew that coming in. But once I, once I saw these videos down and I actually saw that, I was just amazed. I mean, it looks like the Marshmallow Man or something. I'm not real sure. But anyway, um, just an awesome little round. And I, I'll probably push this thing up a little bit faster uh, pretty pretty confident with 85 grains. Uh, of course, it being copper, it's going to slow down a little bit more compared to jacketed because of the pressure is going up. But um, I can push this bullet harder, and I probably will do that. I mean, that wound cavity is only going to get bigger with more velocity coming in. Uh, the reason this didn't pop out the backside was because of the 85 grain weight. Now, we did some 265 grain DS specials uh, over with the gun dungeon a couple of years ago and they zipped through two blocks and kept right on going. I mean, almost, almost straight through. I mean, didn't even hardly move the gel blocks, but, uh, so sorry guys, Matt with Kentucky range time. If you got any questions on this, leave them in the comments and I'd be glad to hear any feedback you guys have got on this bullet, uh, in this caliber, uh, as a, personal defense or as a bear defense round or anything else like that. Just uh, let's let's hear the comments. And guys, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure notifications are turned on and we will catch you guys on the next one.